All right, so students practice rocket math in pairs. And this kind of practice is the heart of the program. This is where they learn. And uh, shocking to, you know, I'll get parents writing to me saying, you know, my kid is so frustrated with rocket math, you know, uh, he's not passing, he's not passing, he's really good in math, but he's not passing rocket math. I said, well, how is he practicing? And they said, practice? No, we just give, they just give the test. Well, yeah, okay, if you don't do the learning part, the tests are hard, you know. So the practice, the, the learning happens when they're doing this. Um, so students with the white paper, without the answer, say the problems and the answers aloud, right? So they have to be saying the answers from memory, right? Uh, they go clockwise around the outside uh, of the um, timing. You see the little rockets that aim them in the right direction. They say the whole verbal chain, the problem and the answer, uh, is practiced and memorized. So they, they say 9 times 7 is 63, or equals 63, whichever you prefer. You have to say the whole thing. Why is that? Well, it's a verbal chain, and that's uh, how we learn is in verbal chains. Uh, let me show you how this works. Um, raise your hand, don't say anything, but raise your hand if you can think of the last word of the Pledge of Allegiance. Let me try it this way. And justice for... See how easy that was? That's a verbal chain at the end of the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and it, by saying, and justice for, it just keys off all. It just pops into your head without really thinking about it. Well, the same thing happens when practicing facts, right? A student says 9 times 7 is 63. A little bit later, 9 times 7 is 63. And a, a little bit later, 9 times 7 is 63. Keep saying that over and over and over again. Um, it gets to the point where he's doing a math problem. It's nine times, he says to himself, nine times seven, and 63 pops into his head whether he means it to or not. That's obligatory, right? That's automaticity. And that enables him to keep focusing on how to do the problem. Which number do I carry, right? You see that all the time. And kids, you know, they suddenly carry the wrong number. You know, they carry the ones number instead of the tens number. And that's because they got confused because they spent so long trying to figure out what nine times seven was. So they say the whole verbal chain and the answer. So why is saying that whole thing important? It creates a verbal chain um, that you do. And we learn that in uh, direct instruction with uh, learning the months of the year and all that stuff. All right, so how does the checker check? Well, the checker, the one who has the colored answers, um, corrects both errors and hesitations. Errors are pretty rare, but hesitations happen pretty frequently. So a student says nine times seven is, and they have to stop and think about it. We want them to understand that you need to know it well enough that you don't have to hesitate. You don't pause to think about it. And so if they correct the hesitation, they say 9 times 7 is 63, um, then the student learns, okay, i got to know that instantly. Okay? So there's three steps to the correction procedure, and this is very, very important. Right? This is where the learning occurs. So step one, the checker says the problem and the correct answer. So they say 4 times 3 is 12. Sometimes students will read the problems upside down. Sometimes they will read... They will say the problem wrong. And when they do that, um, saying no uh, is confusing because what they just said was correct. So by not saying no and just saying 4 times 3 is 12, um, that clues you, well, you said 3 times 4 is 12, and it's, that's not what it says. Or you said 4 times 4 is 16, but that's not what it says. So 4 times 3 is 12. They just say the correct problem in the answer. That's the best way to jump in. Then they ask the student to repeat it, um, repeat the problem in the answer three times. Um, <coughs> three times is not some magic number, and you don't memorize, you don't actually learn anything by repeating something over and over. But <coughs> this clues the student that they're trying to remember this one. Okay, This is one you, you weren't 
instantaneous on, or this is one you got wrong, so you're trying to really remember this. So you, you say to them, say it three times, and then they say, four times three is 12, four times three is 12, four times three is 12. And that clues to them, ah, I'm trying to remember this one. Then the third step is, uh, the checker says for them to go back three problems and begin again. So they go back three problems, and that's the reason that the problem, the practice problems are in a circle. Because even if they miss the first problem, they can still go back three problems back around the circle. Um, and they go back three problems because we want them to encounter that same that problem again before they forget it. So we just go back three, so they go one, two, three, and then, oop, they got to say it again. And hopefully this time they can say it without any hesitation. 